coin on. Ladies and gentlemen, we are joined by the President of the United States, President Abraham Lincoln. Don't worry about that. Here we are. Yeah. And I have requested the Gettysburg Address because at a pivotal point in our history, this speech changed everything. And you'll be amazed at how long or not long it is. All right. We get a little more folk from there. Folk. We might look at hook. Yeah, you're looking at that. On the first three days of July in the year 1863, in and around a small little Pennsylvania town called Gettysburg, was fought the bloodiest battle ever to take place on the North American continent. 56,000 American lives vanished into the mist and smoke and flame of a human storm. Several months later, I myself was in that little get town of Gettysburg. I'd been invited by the governor of Pennsylvania to make a few appropriate remarks at the dedication of the cemetery where some of the soldiers were buried. Understand, I was not the main speaker at this event. Oh, they made sure someone else got that honor. His name was Edward Everett. And friends, Edward Everett was the most famous speaker in America. He stood on the platform that day. He addressed the crowd for almost three hours. His speech was 30 pages long. Tell me what he said. I have no idea. I spoke a little less than three minutes. My entire speech only has 10 senses in it. 272 words. And if there are any educators among you, only 18 of those words have more than three syllables. It's a very plain and speech. And even though I thought it was a complete failure, some people said they did remember. This is what I said on that cold November afternoon. I said, four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation, conceived in liberty, dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Now, we're engaged in a great civil war testing whether that nation or any nation so conceived and so dedicated can long endure. We're met on a great battlefield of that war. We've come to dedicate a portion of that field as a final resting place for those who here get their lives that that nation might live. It's it's altogether fit and proper that we should do this. But in a large sense, we cannot dedicate. We cannot consecrate. We cannot have this breath. The brave men living in dead who struggled here has consecrated it far above our poor power to add or detract. The world will no, no longer remember what we here. It can never forget what they did here. It's for us, rather to be dedicated here to the unfinished work which they who fought here have thus far so nobly advanced. It's rather that we be here dedicated to the great task we bring in before us. That from these honored dead we take increased devotion to that cause for which they gave a last full measure of devotion. That we here, I live in God, these dead shall not have died in vain. And that this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom. The government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from the earth. I, I got to take a second, guys. Um, we could talk about things, we could talk about history. Uh, we could talk about, you know, all kinds of things in our sphere. But uh, the reason why this kind of hit home is I was second with the Marine Corps. Our trip was to get, and we got kicked out uh, of this person's land. Uh, we did we did all the movements of the South. On the second day, we did all the movements of the door and so we walked the battlefield as if we were in those forces and we got to hear from uh, the, the tour the tour guides i don't want to call them tour guides that's kind of sounds cheap but 
we got to hear from the people that preserve Gettysburg. Uh, tell us the stories of uh, we got to see the field expedient hospital that uh, where Union soldiers and Confederate soldiers tended to, and it didn't matter what they were wearing, what uniform they were wearing. So the Gettysburg Address has always been important to me, uh, not only because I've been there, not only from a military tactician, but the words shall not perish from the earth. Uh, we, personal opinion, do have the greatest country in the world. We have a hard history, and we've done right, we've done wrong, we've done in the middle. But it was brave men and women that have served this country, that have, that have been the preservers. They've been our life. And all the geopolitical stuff that goes on today, and social media, and, and all this stuff that is is dividing us or a media that is not helping with bringing us together but only alienating us and dividing us further that speech I mean will always live in my heart uh, because it was a time where our country is so proud we were so on the brink of losing everything and the president got up for all of three minutes or so delivered that speech and the impact of that speech changed everything. It just changed everything. Sorry, I got a little... Uh, sir. Thank you for that. Yes, sir. And if you think the media is bad now, read the news. Wow. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> Some things never change. Have a great day. Mr. President, it was an honor. It was an honor. Wow. So we just had uh, the President Abraham Lake uh, of the United States during the Civil War um, give us the Gettysburg Address. Uh, wow. 